So let us discuss today the problem number 22 from ISA BSTAT and BMA conference 2013. So it's a number theory problem and it tells us to find the last digit of this expression. The expression we can see uh, each term is a factorial. It starts from 100 factorial and goes till 110 factorial and it's an alternative sum. So uh, first of all, we need to understand that what are the reason behind um, the zeros at the end of any number. And we will learn about a formula or a theorem we can say, which can uh, help us to find out number of zeros at the end of a factorial number. So after seeing these things, we'll be, uh, we hope that we'll be able to solve this problem. So let us move on to the concept. Concept is D polygonax formula. Now, what D polygonax formula uh, help us to do is it help us to find out uh, what is the highest power of a prime that divides a factorial number. Let's say, for example, P is a prime and N is any natural number. So if P to the power alpha, if P to the power alpha divides n factorial, if P to the power alpha divides n factorial, we can find out the maximum value of this alpha using the de Polignac formula. Now, what is that? So, alpha max, the value of alpha max would be floor of n over p. So, floor of x, where x is a real number, is just the integer part of x. It is denoted by this notation box of x or we say floor of x. Now, for example, floor of 4.3 would be just 4 because it will just take the integer part. It will get rid of the decimal portion, which is 0.3. So it will get rid of that decimal portion. It will give you back uh, this uh, integral part, which is 4. So alpha max is obtained with this summation n over p, which would be a real number because n is natural, p is a prime, should be a real number. Prime means it's definitely not equal to zero, plus n by p square, again a real number, and floor of that would give me an integer. Then n by p cube, floor of that would give me another integer. And we will continue uh, to a certain extent, but this sum looks like an infinite sum. It is not infinite because we can understand after a certain uh, term, the power of that particular prime will be bigger than the natural number n because that numerator is not changing but the denominator is increasing so after some time it has to be true that this power of prime any power of prime that would be greater than the natural number n and in that case the, the real number we are going to get should be less than one so it should be zero point something and floor of that would just give us zero and any term after that would just give us give us zero for example the highest power of 2 that divides 10 factorial using the polygonax formula, we can write it like 10 over 2 floor of that plus 10 over 2 square floor of that plus 10 over 2 cube and floor of that plus 10 over 2 to the power 4 and so on. So now 10 over 2 is just 5, floor is 5. 10, of 10 by 4 is just 2.5 something. So if we take the floor, it will give us 2. Then 10 over 2 cube is just 1 point something. So it will give us 1. And after that, the power of 2, fourth power of 2 is greater than 10. So any term starting from 10 over 4, 10 over 2 to the power 4, and any term after that should be, uh, should give us, the floor should give us 0. So that uh, the value we'll be getting here, the va maximum value of the power we'll be getting here is 5 plus 2 plus 1, which is just 8. So 2 to the power 8 divides 10 factorial and that is the highest power of 2 that divides 10 factorial. 2 to the power 9 cannot divide 10 factorial. Now let us try to understand, uh, I'll not go to the proof of the polygonax formula, I'll just try to explain the idea so that we can understand why does this formula work. So to understand this, if we write 10 factorial, it is nothing but 1 times 2 times 3 so until 10. So you see that when we are doing 10 by 2, we are actually calculating floor of 10 by 2. We are actually seeing, we are actually counting that how many multiples of 2 are there starting from 1 through 10. What, how that, does that help? 
each multiples of two contains at least one two in it, right? For example, two contains a two, six contains a two, four also contains a two, uh, eight contains a two, ten contains a two. So we have counted one two from each of the multiples of two. But next we are doing 10 over 2 square and float of that. And that is basically counting the multiples of 4. Why we are doing this? Because we can understand as 4 was like 4, 8, these are multiples of 4. They are already counted once when we did this 10 by 2 and float of that. So 1, 2 is counted from it. But 4, 8, they have some extra 2s, right? Isn't it? So we are counting those 2s as well. Then after that, we are counting that extra 2 in 8 and so on. So that is why we are getting the, how many, to, to, what is the total number of 2s there? That should be 8. And 8 is the maximum power of 2 that divides 10 factorial. Now, the number of zeros at the end of any number is determined by what is the maximum power of 10 that divides the number. Because if it has uh, 10 to the power, uh, something 10 to the power k dividing that so that number should have uh, like should be divisible by divisible by 10 for k times and that means the number should end with k many zeros so that's what determine the factors 10 that's what determine the zeros at the end of any number so for 100 factorial for example we can understand that there are fives lots of fives and lots of twos within 100 factorial because it's the product of all the numbers starting from 1 through 100 but if we look carefully the frequency of twos are more often than fives because every alternate numbers are a multiple of two but there are every like fifth number is a multiple of five so definitely two is occurring much more uh, much many times than uh, five in this 100 factorial so if we can count out, uh, count uh, that how many fives are there, how many fives are factor of this 100 factorial, all of these fives will get sufficient amount of twos to pair up and uh, like give a factor of 10. So if we can just count the number of five or rather the what is the maximum power of five that divides 100 factorial will give us the number of zeros at the end of 100 factorial. And we know number the maximum power of 5 could be obtained using this formula 100 over 5 plus 100 over 25 the next term would be 100 over 125 that would be the floor of that would be 0 and after that anything would be 0 so we will not take that so that would just be 20 plus 4 24 so we can understand that the maximum power of 5 that will divide 100 factorial is 24 hence 100 factorial ends with 24 zeros using that same idea we can say 101 factorial also ends with 24 zeros not only that any factorial starting from 100 factorial so on to 104 factorial ends with 24 zeros only Starting from 105 factorial, see 105 has one extra 5 than 100 factorial. So that will end with 25 zeros. And not only that, any factorial till 109 will end with 25 zeros. And 110 factorial ends with 26 zeros. Now we can understand if we look at the expression given, the first 5 terms ends with 24 zeros. Next 5 terms ends with 25 zeros and the last term end with 26 zeros. So when we add or subtract, if you look carefully, there is a number ending with 10 zero, uh, like 24 zeros like this. There is a number ending with 25 zeros like this. There is a number ending with 26 zeros with it. So when you add or subtract, whatever you do, you will at least have 24 zeros here. You will at least have 24 zeros. So, but we are not sure what like we are sure that there will be at least 24 but will be 24 or 25 or 26 to understand that we need to understand what is the 25th digit from the right of 100 factorial is what is the 25th digit of uh, 101 from the right so let's say for example i don't know what it is if the 
uh, 25th digit from the right of 100 factorial is some 7 or something. I don't know what it is. And um, 101 factorial is also 7. Then they will just cancel up and will give you a 0 again. So that will make 25. So this is how we can, the number of zeros could be more than that. So this method, you, like checking the number of zeros at the end of each turn does not help too much. So what we can do, we can have an idea that if there are two numbers x and y, and we know this has 10 to the power k as its factor, and y has 10 to the power some m as its, its factor. So their product x times y should have a factor of 10 to the power k plus m. That means the product should end with k plus m zeros, where x was ending with k zeros and y was ending with m zeros. So that means if we can somehow factorize the whole expression, that can help us. To factorize this, first of all, we can see 100 factorial is common in every term there. So let us take 100 factorial common. And after that, we will just uh, arrange the positive and negative terms separately. So we, have, we will have a 1 there, which will be positive. Plus, there will be 101 times 102 plus 101 times 102 times 103 times 104 and will go all the way till 101 through 110. These are all the positive terms and the negative terms are 101 plus 101 times 102 times 103 and this will go all the way till 101 through 109. So we already know that these are the two factors, 100 factorial and this whole big expression is another factor. So we already know that the number of zeros at the end of 100 factorial is 24. 24. So if we can somehow find out what is the number of zeros at the end of this big expression, then we'll be just adding that with 24 and that will be our final answer. But if we try to check the unit digit of this whole expression, there can be two cases. That unit digit could be uh, a zero, it could be non-zero. If it is non-zero, then we are okay. So that means the last digit, the unit digit is non-zero, means there is no factor of 10. So that means in the whole expression, total number of zeros should be only 24 because of this 100 factorial. But if somehow the unit digit is zero, then we have to check whether the hundreds digit is non-zero or not. If it is non-zero, then we are done. We can stop there. Otherwise, we have to check the thousands digit and we have to continue like this. When we check the units digit, so for the positive terms, first term is one, so unit digit is one. For the next term, it should be one times two, units digit should be two. For the next term, it should be one times two times three times four, which gives us 24, but we will be only considering the units digit, digit which will be four. And after that, every term should have zero at the end because uh, it's basically the product of 101 to 105. So basically the product of unit digit is nothing but a five factorial. And the next one is, uh, it should be a, sorry, the next one should be six factorial. The next one should be eight factorial and so on. So every term should end with a zero. So all the unit digits after this term, after this term, all the unit digits there should be zero. Now for the negative term, the first one ends with a one that's very easy to see. Next one, which is this, ends with a six because one times two times three. But the next one should be 101 through 105 that should end with a zero because if you multiply the unit digits, that gives you a five factorial, which ends with a zero and anything after that should end with a zero. So when we see, the addition of the unit digit of this positive quantities should be 1 plus 2 plus 4 and minus the unit digit of the negative quantities should be 1 plus 6, which is 7. So 7 minus 7 gives you the unit digit of this expression is 0. What does that mean? That means we need to check the hundreds digit. So we have written the unit digit of or, or rather the last two digits of each factorial number starting from 1 to 10. Definitely. 1 ends with 2, uh, 1 ends with a 0 and 1, 2 ends with 0 and 2, 3 factorial ends with 0 and 6, 4 factorial is 2, 4, and so on. We can verify that very easily. So 
So now the first one, it is basically a one factorial and it should end with zero one. This one is basically the, the product of the unit digit is a two factorial. So that should end with a zero two. The next one is basically a four factorial. So that should end with a zero, uh, that should end with two four. Next one should be six factorial, which should end with two zero. Then we should have a eight factorial, which will end with another two zero. And the next one is 10 factorial, which would end with 0, 0. Now for the negative quantities, this is just a 1 factorial, so it will end with 0, 1. Next one is 3 factorial, which will end with 0, 6. Then it will be 5 factorial, which will end with 2, 0. Next should be 7 factorial, which will end with 4, 0. Next is 9 factorial, which will end with 8, 0. So now if we just uh, see the sum of all the uh, two digits, last two digits of the positive quantities, 0, 1 plus 0, 2 plus 2, 4 plus 2, 0 plus 2, 0 plus 0, 0, which is equal to 67. And the if we, if we just see the last two digits of the negative quantities, that will be 0, 1 plus 0, 6 plus 2, 0 plus 4, 0 plus 80, which will give us uh, 47 as the last two digit. We can check it very easily. It will give us 47. So when we subtract 67 from 47, it should give us a 20. So we can understand the last two digit of this whole big expression is the last one is 0 and the hundreds digit is 2. So now we can stop here and we can understand that this whole big expression has only one factor of 10. That means there is one zero at the end of it. So the product of these two things should end with 25 zeros. And that's our answer. I hope you have enjoyed this problem. We will meet in the next video. Thank you for watching.